Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. In the era of persecution, the Christians were persecuted because they did not offer sacrifices to pagans and to pagan gods. And when we think about pagan gods now, we think it must have been so easy for the martyrs not to believe in that because we think of it now and it seems so backwards and so wrong and so against everything that we believe in. So sometimes we don't give enough credit to the Christian martyrs in the sense that we think of the beliefs that they were going against to be things that were easy to overcome. It's easy to believe in God when compared to a pagan God because a pagan God, you've never seen a miracle from that pagan God. There's like gods to the sun, gods to the moon, all this kind of stuff. And so we think of it as like easy to overcome. The current battle now that the Christian family faces is a battle from the idea that God does not exist or atheism and this battle is definitely has the same sort of fights as the past battle did in the sense that uh, sometimes the smartest or the most uh, beloved or the richest people believe that there is no God and so we sometimes as Christians and our children look at that and say, well, maybe there's something going on here. I say all the time that a lot of my professors when I was learning in school did not believe in God and they would mention those kind of things. And back then I looked up to my professors because I thought they were smarter than us and they were better than us and more studied than us. And so it was a little bit hard sometimes when we see the people around us, they don't believe in God and they tell us that there's something wrong with us or that uh, we're not up to the standard or we're not smart enough because we do believe in God. And so we're facing a similar persecution. Back then, the kings and leaders and emperors were offering sacrifices to pagan gods and the people worshipped these emperors and kings and looked at the queens and their beauty and all this stuff. And so the similarities are present now in the way that we think of people that don't believe in God. To fight this, a family must make sure that the parents in the family are not hypocritical. The great enemy to faith is hypocrisy because it's easy for us sometimes to say something, but it's hard for us sometimes to act on that saying. So to practice what we preach is the one thing that we can do to make sure that our children don't fall to this fake glory that is atheism. Also, in order to change the minds of the people that believe in this and look down upon us, they must see us acting properly in the things that we say that we believe. One of the hardest things that we have to do to overcome this hypocrisy is the love between one another. Because sometimes we take it personally when someone says something to us or is angry towards us or makes us feel bad or someone gives us a harsh word or tells us something that we don't like. We take it personally and we're hard on ourselves and therefore we're hard on the person. So a good Christian person can still be very hurt by something that someone says. But it's the action or the reaction that's important. In order to maneuver out of this area of hypocrisy, the Christian must be willing to forgive. And this is one of the hardest things also. Not just that we control our anger in the moment, but to be able to forgive the person that is causing us this trouble. When we were growing up, like there was the saying, everybody knows it, like sticks and stones may break by bones, but words can never hurt me. Honestly, Sometimes I wish that like the people that were tormenting me when I was a little boy would just have hit me instead of keep talking and making fun and putting me down. The words actually do hurt. And so 
there is no shame in being hurt by the words of others. But there is shame in denying our Christian beliefs and what Christ taught us and turning on our back on that in response or in revenge or in a sense of this person is not for me, so I will never talk to this person again. I will just keep away from this person. I don't forgive them. I don't want to know anything about them. St. Paul says something in, in the epistle that we read today. It's, it's very astute in what we're talking about. He says, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Taban, he was talking about a physical persecution, persecution that was to come, persecution that he had also already endured. But the idea is the same. If we think of everything bad or hurtful that happens to us as a way to coincide with the sufferings of our Father Christ during his passion on earth, then we can overcome the anger, we can overcome the bitterness, and we can overcome the hurt that we feel. If we take the persecutions as being one with Christ, then the things become less hurtful. And there we can rejoice in Christ in His sufferings. And we can say, I know how it feels to be hurt. I don't blame the person anymore. The person offered me this chance to join with you in your sufferings, Christ. So it's a hard thing to do, Taban. And Taban, we don't also compare someone shouting at us or you know, saying something rude to us or mean to us or doing a, a bad gesture to us as the sufferings of Christ, but we certainly can endure them much like Christ endured. So Christ endured bad language, Christ endured spitting, Christ endured um, torture, Christ endured much pain for our sakes. So at the very least, we can endure a harsh word for His sake. And so if we take it out of the place of the person that's doing it, we don't blame them, and we also forget about our own feelings about the things that are happening to us, then we can look at the person and actually forgive. We can deal with the word and actually not get angry. And we can deal with the repercussions being hurt but forgetting about it because we take solace in Christ. So I'll read for you the verse again. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. So it's not just sometimes we also believe that if we believe in Christ, and we are good Christians, then only good things will happen to us from now on. And that's not necessarily true. Taban, when we live in Christ, we live in grace, and we live in happiness, and we live in joy. But still, we live in joy despite the negative things that happen to us, despite the hardships that befall us, despite the obstacles that we have to overcome. So even though these things exist in our lives because of our belief in Christ, we overcome Him, or we overcome them through the joy of our Savior. So it's not so much that because we're Christian, only good things happen. It's because we believe in Christ and we live in His joy. Even when bad things come to us, we're overcoming them in Christ's love. So, for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So if people see Christ in us by our denying ourselves, by our not succumbing to the evils of the world by not responding in kind to a bad word or an angry thing or putting us down, then people can see Christ in us. If we as parents do this with one another and we do it with the people in the world when our kids are watching, then when we tell them that we have to forgive and we have to love and we have to show compassion, they're not going to look at us and remember all the things that we did wrong. They're only going to remember the good things that we did. So we have to remember this. In order to fight the coming persecution of atheism or the non-belief in God, we must be careful to not be hypocrites ourselves, to teach our children correctly, but also act the same way so that they have nothing to hold against us. And Satan can't use our actions and our words against us. May God continue to give us all faith in Christ and also the patience to overcome the bad things of the world so that we can teach our children correctly and glory be to God forever.